everybody. It is Dr. Jill Carnahan, and you're live with me today for a Q&A. We have collected uh, your questions over the last several days on Instagram and Facebook. So I have a whole list to go through, and I will also be watching on the feed. So if you want to ask, if you catch me live right now and want to throw in a question or two, um, I would love to answer. Um, this is the first time I'm actually doing a Q&A live here, but I have a um, suspicion that uh, it will go well and that hopefully you'll get a lot of questions answered and maybe someone else will answer or will ask a question that you would have liked to hear. Um, but stay tuned because, like I said, if this goes well, I will be doing this every uh, month or every several months. And so I will be back again to answer your questions live. Um, it is, and I even asked my staff to write in and tell me some questions because they get on the phones at our office and they get um, questions all the time. So um, staff members, if you're out there or you're listening, feel free to write in questions as well of things that you often hear. Um, so just a little bit of background. Most of you know, I have a practice in Louis Louisville, Colorado. Out here, we call it Louisville, not Louisville. Um, but I have been out here for 10 years and I've been doing functional medicine for almost 20 years, if you can imagine that. Um, my story in just a little bit of a nutshell is I always wanted to be a healer. I didn't really understand it as a child, uh, but those of us who are healers were kind of born with that desire to heal and to help people. And I actually looked at physical therapy and chiropractic school and naturopathic school and acupuncture school because I knew I wanted to help people to heal um, from the inside out and not just use drugs and surgery. But then I actually applied to allopathic MD school in Chicago and I started getting acceptance letters. So what I ended up doing is I went that route because I felt like that would be the best route to really get into the system and understand the predominant system in the US, which is still allopathic medicine and still the best place you want to go if you get a broken bone or a car accident or trauma or heart attack or stroke, um, there's really no better system that takes care of emergencies. But we're not so good with chronic illness like uh, infections and toxins and mold-related illness and even things like diabetes and obesity. So um, the combination, I always say um, now I have a bigger toolbox. So not only do I have drugs and surgery at my disposal or referrals, but I understand at a lot deeper level, the mechanisms of how the body goes wrong or what goes astray or what led to this process. And I always say, you know, in traditional medicine, we're taught to get to a diagnosis and then that's the end point. So all we need is a code and then that's the end point. Um, but with functional and integrative medicine, we not only, we basically start there. And the question that I'm always asking is why? Why did this happen? Um, what's happening with the body and how can we reverse it if possible? So that's just a little bit about me. You can find all of my uh, past Facebook lives here under the video section. Um, and you can find, if you're on my YouTube channel lis listening or watching this, you can subscribe um, right down here in the corner. And um, I hope you'll do that and continue to get all the videos that we put out because we've got lots of free and great content. And I've got a whole January and February scheduled already with upcoming great interviews with doctors. So like I said, stay tuned. My website is just jillcarnahan.com, my name. And there you can find free blogs blogs, free recipes, products we love um, under the online store. And the online store is at drjillhealth.com. So if you want to know about products that um, we have there, again, you can just search and look around and, and browse. There's tons of free content for you. So let's dive into the questions because I'm going to go about 30 minutes today, maybe a little longer and see what we can cover. And then I'll be back for more if we don't get them all covered. I'm gonna start with some of the questions that came in through Facebook and Instagram. And feel free if you're watching this live, I can see already, hi, Nicole, hi, Natalie, hi, Sonia, hi, Kristen. Um, I'm gonna to get to your questions shortly, so just stay tuned. Um, so first of all, Susie, I'm gonna use first names here, no last names. Um, Susie asks, um, of course, I can't find a new specialist for my MCAS. Oh, and I do have a visitor here today, and he's just popping his head up, but I'm going to have him say hi real quick before we get going too far. <laughs> this is Robbie, my puppy. <laughs> so I thought, since they don't have an interviewer, um, he wanted to be on my lap, but now he wants to go um, play. So <laughs> that's Robbie. I have two puppies, a Balinese and a Havanese, the, the Italian and the Cuban, and they're 15 and 16. And they get functional medicine treatment. So they're still going strong at that age. They get collagen and probiotics and they get um, 
antiparasitics once every six months and all kinds of good stuff. And surprisingly for 16 and 15, the one you just saw is 15 years old, which is like, I don't know, like 90s uh, for a human. Um, and they're in good, great shape. So your dogs can get functional medicine as well. So Susie says, I can't find a new specialist for my MCAS. My worst problem at this time is my eyes, which are um, likely histamine and have been over the years checked for dry eyes, which it's not. Tissue surrounding the eyes is swollen in the morning after watering uh, during the night. The eyes are itchy and stuck together in the morning. Prescription drops and over the counter things for histamine don't work. Do you have any ideas? Uh, thanks, Susie, because the eyes are my nemesis. I have been through mold related illness and lots of histamine issues. And I have um, definitely had my share. Um, someday, I don't have it handy, but someday I'll show you all um, a picture of me at the worst when my eyes were red, swollen, like just bright. The skin was all um, denuded and, and raw because of the mold and mast cell activation. So Susie, I understand your pain. First of all, if you haven't tried one of my favorite remedies, which is happens to be right here in my drawer is NAFCON A. It's an over-the-counter antihistamine drop. You might've tried this. It might not work. That's okay, but I think you should try it. There is other ones with this active ingredient. This used to be prescription only. I've used this off and on for my itchy and dry eyes for years, and it really, really does help. Um, then the other thing that I would recommend is looking at fungal dyspepsia and um, mold exposure, because those tend to really aggravate the eyes. A lot of the fungal and mold issues, patients will have um, that red irritated um, eyes. And make sure you have plenty of B vitamins, collagen powder, and some of those very basic things. If you haven't tried over-the-counter histamines like quercetin, um, we have hist assist in our store at drjillhealth.com. Um, and we also have a histamine blocker. The histamine blocker is better for mealtime. If you have histamine related food sensitivities, it contains a DAO enzyme that helps to break down the histamine in your foods. And the hist uh, assist is a combination of bromelain and um, quercetin and luteolin and some of those antihistamine uh, components that will help as well. Um, there's also things like uh, catadifen and monoleucus that can stabilize the mast cells. But it sounds to me like this is a real topical kind of issue. If it's the skin, you may wanna get a very low potency steroid from your doctor called um, desinide. Um, and it can actually uh, help on the skin of the face if it's real reactive. I don't like to use steroids long-term, but if it's severe and inflamed, it can be helpful. So thanks, Susie. Um, Andrea, what order do you treat infections if someone has many like H. pylori, SIBO, parasites, mold, and is HCL supplementation a good or bad idea when one has H. pylori? Much mixed opinions on this. Okay, Andrea, this is a great question because the, most of my patients that I see have multiple layers of infection in the gut. So my first thing as the medical detective is to look at those infections and see if I can cross treat any of those. So for example, say someone has methane SIBO, it's a little harder to treat than hydrogen SIBO and you need a combination not only of rifaximin, but you also need neomycin or metronidazole with that if you're gonna treat with medication. If you're gonna treat with herbs, you need those stronger herbs like um, allicin extract um, or potentially black cumin seed or, or other forms of garlic that could help um, because by itself, things like berberine or oregano may not work for methane SIBO. With H. pylori, um, mastic gum tends to be a really good um, antimicrobial. And if you're doing medications, again, you need sequential either quad or triple therapy. So all that to say, what I try to do is combine a treatment that's going to treat the most things all at the same time um, versus sequentially, although you can do sequentially. In that case, if you have SIBO and H. pylori, I would try to do a regimen that would treat both of those because they both are antibiotic types of regimen. If it's severe, I would probably lean towards the rifaximin um, metronidazole or tinidazole plus something like amoxicillin or clarithromycin, that kind of combination. And again, you'd have to work with your doctor, but if you can cover both the SIBO and the H. pylori all with one round, that would be your best bet. If there's yeast, which there often is in someone who has multiple infections, you must be careful um, to use antifungals with that as well. So it's not uncommon for me to have use of rifaximin, tinidazole or metronidazole with fluconazole or nystatin. So a lot of things for two weeks all at the same time. Now, again, you need to work with your doctor because those are prescription. I am not giving any medical advice here, um, but you can also do herbal regimens and mastic gum tends to be particularly well for H. pylori, um, berberine and oregano, grapefruit seed extract, 
um, and allicin or garlic can be good for SIBO. Um, and then the fungal component, you can use caprylic acid or again, the GSE or the oregano. So again, this is complex because every single patient is different and I don't use protocols. I go by what that patient has and then I create a plan specific for them. But for you, it sounds like a combination of herbs or antibiotics would work best. And you mentioned mold in the background. Um, if I have to uh, order Lyme disease and mold and MCAS and all of those things, I would order it in, you calm down the immune system. So you treat a little bit of MCAS and maybe something with the limbic activation, and then you treat the mold and then you treat the Lyme. The reason for that is often the immune system gets weakened in a moldy environment and the Lyme will pop up as an infection. And so sometimes that infection is an issue only because of the weakened immune system. And if that's the case, then often um, I will treat the mold and the immune system. And then the Lyme may or may not ever need to be treated because that immune system comes back online and keeps it in check. So that's one of those things. Um, I've got quite a few more from Facebook, but I'm gonna go to, this. these are the previous. I've got a ton coming in. 40 comments, holy cow, I'm gonna have to do this every month. This is so fun. Um, I've got a lot of you uh, writing in. So I'm gonna get to a screen where I can see all of your comments real quickly. Give me just one second and then I'm gonna answer some questions there. I just have to go to a different screen so I can see you all. Okay, there we go. All right, so here, these are live um, questions. Addison's disease from Leslie, besides well-balanced non-processed food, stress relief, what else can I do? So Addison's is where your body is, your adrenal glands are not doing their job. So um, it's different from adrenal fatigue. I actually don't like that word anymore because it doesn't really describe what's happening in the HPA axis. But Addison's is true and pure adrenal failure, hypoadrenia or hypocortisolemia, um, many different terms for this. So um, with that, you're going to need to stress dose for hydrocortisone or whatever you're on, um, because when you have stresses or when you have surgery or when you have illness, you're going to need more cortisol. Um, other things would be you want to change your lifestyle so that it's not stressful. So you're getting plenty of sleep. You're eating clean food. It's organic, non-GMO, local if possible. Get out all the um, type, typical allergens like gluten, dairy, soy, egg, corn, peanut, alcohol, sugar. Um, and then you want to really support yourself. You do not want to do vigorous activity. If you have Addison's, so you're going to want to do more gentle, like you can move, you can do yoga, you can do hiking, Tai Chi movement with breath work is the best for adrenals. So I'd recommend hiking, um, probably not even jogging or running, but um, yoga, Tai Chi, all of those things that are movement. Thanks, cute. Thanks, Elizabeth, cute dog. I think I've been exposed to COVID. What supplements should I take to help? Oh, I love this question, Natalie. And I'm sure that's because you get it all the time. So let's talk about uh, COVID. Now I am not diagnosing or, or uh, recommending any treatment protocols here, um, but I know that's a big concern in your immune system. So what I know to be true is there are certain nutrients that support the immune system. Some of those are zinc, vitamin D. You've heard all the studies. If I had to pick a desert island vitamin and just like one, it would be uh, vitamin D. And then um, vitamin C, also important. Now, if you take too much vitamin C, guess what? You're going to be running to the restroom because it causes diarrhea. So the best way to do that is take liposomal forms because you can get higher doses without affecting the gut. It goes right into your tissues. So in our store, we have Quicksilver liposomal, um, one of our favorites, and um, really effective, and you can get the doses higher. And if you were to have the infection right now, you could take that every few hours and keep your vitamin C level very high. Quercetin and melatonin can be helpful if you do have the infection because they decrease the cytokine response. Um, so I often recommend six to 10 milligrams of melatonin at bedtime. And then we have um, quercetin in our histocyst product. And we also have plain quercinase from Thorn Research on drjillhealth.com if you wanna look at that. And you can take one or two caps twice a day. Um, those are the main things, but other things that are really critical would be glutathione. You can take that liposomally or orally um, and N-acetylcysteine and N-acetylcysteine. All of those are great antioxidants. So that's kind of the immune support that I usually recommend for my patients. Um, and then I see Sassi recommending mitochondrial biogenesis, which is just like a fancy term for how do we support our mitochondria. Um, sunshine. Uh, Nicole says, my question is someone suspects chronic Lyme. What's the best, most affordable route? Okay, this is a great question because Lyme is complex and yet there are things we can do. So I still like to get a good diagnosis because I, I never want to assume because we all know what assumption makes out of us. Um, you've heard that one before. Um, but instead of assuming, I like to test. 
Igenix is the best test out there because they have the most um, antigens for things like tick-borne relapsing fever, and they have very good technology, the immunoblot. So I still like to use Igenix, but it's very expensive. Um, I mean, we're talking the main Lyme test that I order is a minimum $800, but with co-infections, $1,300, $1,500. So I know that's a lot of money. And depending on where we're at with the patient and the journey, if we really need answers, I still often do recommend it. Um, but there's other labs out there. I use Vibrant Labs. Um, we can use Galaxy Labs. Um, we can use, so there's quite a few out there that you can use. Um, you can even do them in the serum from like Boulder Hospital or any of the local labs that we have around here, LabCorp Quest, et cetera. Um, but they're not as accurate because they're testing one strain of Connecticut type of Lyme. So if you got bit in Wisconsin or California or Florida, it may miss it. Or if you have tick-borne relapsing fever or Babesia, you may miss it as well. So the real question was, what do we do if we're on a budget? First of all, like I said, I like to test. I like to know what's going on. But if you can't do that and you suspect it, um, there are herbal remedies. There's three main types of brands. We carry these in our store. If you ever want to have questions, you can call us. Um, Nutramedics is one line. And two of my favorites with them are Cemento and Vanderol. These are kind of a one-two punch that are very good for treating Lyme disease. Um, Byron White makes some other great protocols and Beyond Balance. And these are all tinctures. And I can treat um, tick-borne infections without using drugs in some cases. So those are quite effective. Um, so that's how I would treat Lyme disease. Uh, best air purifier model for mold. Well, you guys probably already have heard me talk about Austin Airs. I have two here in my condo. I have five at work. I'm such a big fan. Um, I actually became a dealer just so I could get discounts for my patients. So if you do want an Austin air filter, call our office, we can get you a deal. But there's other ones out there too. IQ Air is an excellent brand. My main criteria is that you want a good HEPA filtration system. So all the particulate matter is filtered out. And then you also want